Good afternoon, everyone. We begin with a picture worth a thousand words. Arms folded, pants wet above the kneecap, street flooding that hasn't been seen in quite a while. Here's another cleanup week off to a wet start in Moorhead's Village Green neighborhood. A dramatic sight, larger than life stuffed bear cast aside on the curb, suddenly laid out on his back in the street, a victim of this morning's torrential rainfall. We're currently experiencing a much needed break from the moisture. Let's get the very latest from our chief meteorologist, Hutch Johnson. Hutch? Mike, thanks so much. And we're going to begin with a look at our uh, river stage graph at that Pembina River and, or excuse me, the Red River at Pembina. Notice this flat line here in the purple area, meaning that river is going to stay at major flood stage for some time. Now, many of our rivers that look like this or are at major flood stage are our areas of concern at highest risk of our forecast which does include yet more rain. But for tonight, most of this heavy rain and thunderstorm activity has shifted off to the east where we do have a chance of severe weather. Eastern Minnesota into Wisconsin, not for us. Continued rain showers in the Devil's Lake Basin. Now, the last 48 hours of rainfall through your weekend into Monday morning have uh, some rainfall estimates from Doppler radar. Now the colors you see here in yellow are between one and two inches of rain in the blues up to an inch of rain. So a lot of rain in the Northern Valley, but where we see the oranges here, three to five inches, including near Fargo, Ada and the Northern or Central Red River Valley Highway 200 corridor with a lot from that th slow moving thunderstorm north of Valley City and this area, the big winter up here uh, just near New Rockford between four and eight seven inches of rain estimated by the radar. That water is all going to work through our systems. Here's some hail from this morning. This was in Fergus Falls. That's headache hail right there. It looks like cement all cemented together. River trends. Green arrows are good falling river levels. Many of these uh, sites along the northern Red River Valley north of Grand Forks still rising a little bit near Drayton. That Pembina River near Neche still in major flood stage and a significant concern. So more rain in these areas will be a problem and we're tracking the chance of severe weather Wednesday and Thursday. That means thunderstorms, Mike. Thunderstorms can equal locally heavy rain like we had today. We just don't want it to fall on our hot spots. I'll have details in your hour by hour forecast in a minute. Find the spigot, turn it off if you can. We'd love to. All right, thanks, Hutch. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum was in northeastern North Dakota to survey flood damage today. The governor checking in on flood response and recovery, including efforts to stabilize the Borbanis Dam upstream of Cavalier. The governor also toured Renwick Dam west of Cavalier. That dam underwent an $8.9 million rehabilitation project and has performed well during the current flood, according to state officials. In other news today, two elderly people are seriously injured after a car crashed into a building, trapping the pair in bed. DL police in Detroit Lakes say it happened on Saturday at Lakes Inn. The police say the driver crashed into the building, prompting a natural gas leak and trapping two people inside their room. Then the vehicle took off. 77-year-old Frank Benninger and 77-year-old Jacqueline Benninger were taken to a Fargo hospital for treatment of their injuries. A short time later, police spotted the vehicle and stopped the driver. 53-year-old Wade Olds was arrested for criminal vehicular operation, driving under the influence, and failure to stop. Investigators say they've arrested a mother and are charging her in the death of a baby found in Lake Pepin almost 20 years ago. 50-year-old Jennifer Matter of Red Wing, Minnesota was named as the mother in this case and was taken into custody this morning. She faces second-degree murder charges. Investigators say that a baby girl was found in the Mississippi River near Red Wing in 1999 and that she's also Matter's, as proven by DNA testing. The Goodhue County Sheriff said the first case happened decades ago as he laid out the disturbing murders, uh, details of the murder. It has been 8,222 days since we discovered our first newborn wrapped in a towel and floating in the water near the city of Red Wing. Almost four years later, another newborn baby was discovered on the shore of Lake Pepin in Frontenac. President Biden is making it easier to get military aid to Ukraine as Russian President Vladimir Putin defended the war. Natalie Brand has the day's developments from the White House. As Russia's war on Ukraine stretches into its 75th day, President Biden signed a bill to streamline providing military aid by lending or leasing needed weapons and equipment. 
It's similar to a program used during World War II. The cost of the fight is not cheap, but uh, caving to aggression is even more costly. That's why we're staying in this. And on Monday, in an annual tradition, Russian President Vladimir Putin marked World War II Victory Day with a military parade in Moscow's Red Square. He defended his war in Ukraine, blaming the West and NATO expansion, but did not hint at a broader mobilization, as some had feared. We still heard some of the same uh, bluster, some of the same uh, falsehoods. To date, President Putin stands accused of nearly 10,000 war crimes. Ukrainian officials say 60 people were killed after a bomb hit a school in eastern Ukraine where people were sheltering. In his own speech, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said soon Ukraine will have two victory days, vowing his country will win the war. President Zelensky met virtually with President Biden and other world leaders on Sunday. The White House says the G7 committed to phasing out or banning the import of Russian oil, reducing dependence on Russian energy. Meanwhile, First Lady Jill Biden made a surprise visit to Ukraine on Sunday, meeting with Ukraine's First Lady and children who have been displaced by the war. Monday, she met with the president of Slovakia before heading back to Washington. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. And a Pentagon spokesperson says there are indications Ukrainians are being moved from Ukraine into Russia against their will. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has become a symbol of defiance in the war against Russia, swapping out a suit and tie for his trademark military fatigues as he hosts world leaders in Kyiv. One of the Zelensky's most iconic pieces went on the auction block at a charity event in London last week. The Ukrainian embassy promoted the piece. Today, the whole world looks up to the man wearing a simple fleece jacket. And now, the iconic item personally signed by President Zelensky is here. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson kicked off the brave Ukraine event, urging bidders to dig deep setting an opening price of $60,000, while the hammer fell at more than 110000 As the war grinds on, Zelensky has shown he's willing to do whatever it takes to ensure his country's victory, even if that means selling the shirt off his back. Ukrainian President Zelensky presented a medal to patron a Jack Russell Terrier, who detects bombs with his nose. The small dog was accompanied by his handler to receive the honor recognizing his courage before a joint news conference between Zelensky and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Patron barked during the presentation and wagged his tail, prompting laughter from the audience. Trudeau patted his pockets as though he was looking for a dog treat. In the Bahamas, investigators are searching for answers after three American tourists died in their hotel rooms and another had to be airlifted to a hospital. All four victims were staying at the Sandals Emerald Bay Resort in Great Exuma. Health officials have not determined what caused the deaths, but say foul play is not suspected. Manuel Borquez has, says the U.S. Department of State is very closely monitoring the investigation. There were some signs of individual presenting to the clinic with nausea, vomiting and some symptoms. The Bahamas Health Minister says it all began Thursday night. Two American tourists at the Sandals Emerald Bay Resort complained they were feeling ill and were treated at a local medical facility. The next morning, the couple was found dead in their resort villa. The man police say was slumped against a wall. The woman was on their bed. Both showed signs of convulsion. Minutes earlier, police had found another man dead on the floor of his villa. ABC News reports it was Birmingham, Alabama resident Vincent Chiarella and that his wife Donna survived after experiencing severe swelling and paralysis. She was airlifted to Princess Margaret Hospital in the capital, Nassau, about a 30-minute flight away. Now health officials are waiting on autopsy reports to determine what caused the tourists' mysterious deaths. Hopefully nothing's going to happen to us. Jason Toth and Sidney Rosenquist arrived at the Sandals Resort for their honeymoon, one day after the victims' bodies were found. It definitely gives me a cause for concern just because you want to know what happened. It's certainly very irregular. As a general rule, CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Agus says it's important to have access to your health records when you travel and to listen to your body. If you start to feel ill and it's not getting better, that you go to, to an emergency room wherever you are. And if the treatment doesn't work, go back to that emergency room. Manuel Bohorquez, CBS News. 
CBS News did reach out to Sandals for comments. Sandals said staff followed protocol, alerting medical personnel and local law enforcement as soon as they were aware of the health emergencies. They are now actively working to support the investigation. More bodies were pulled from the ruins of a luxury hotel in Cuba's capital today, bringing the official death toll there of a powerful explosion at the iconic building to 35. State TV is reporting that search crews are on site with dogs searching through debris of the Hotel Saratoga. The 96-room hotel in Old Havana it was preparing to reopen after being closed for two years when an apparent gas leak ignited, blowing the outer walls into the busy mid-morning streets on Friday. Several nearby structures were also damaged. Protesters continue to gather and tensions continue to rise across the country over abortion rights. A new CBS News poll shows nearly two-thirds of Americans want Roe v. Wade to be kept in place and abortion rights preserved. 36% disagree. Some Democrats are now trying to shift this argument from the courts to Congress. The debate happening this week in the Senate is sure to be a pivotal issue in the midterm elections. The bill has already passed in the U.S. House, and despite the vocal protests ahead of the high court's ruling, it will face challenges in the Senate.